Translating any piece of media into another language is a long and arduous task, one that directly affects the audience's view of the piece of media in question. Video game localization especially requires an increased workload, translating menus, dialogue, names, and potentially even changing certain aspects of the game to account for the target culture. Well-defined style standards didn't exist in the early days of video game localization, leading to malign translations that almost always broke the sense of immersion that game developers were so intent on creating. In the late 1990s, however, a well-known Japanese game developer by the name of Squaresoft hired a man who would go on to revolutionize the way Squaresoft approached localization. Richard Honeywood's work on Xenogears in 1998 was the catalyst for a reform in the way Squaresoft approached localization, shattering the language barrier and bringing many important video games to non-Japanese-speaking players around the world. 1997 was a great year for Squaresoft. Final Fantasy VII, one of the most critically acclaimed games ever made, was just about to launch, propelling Squaresoft onto the global scene. Final Fantasy VII would also be the fourth title in Square's flagship series to be localized, but it was by no means perfect. The game exhibited numerous grammatical mistakes, mistranslations, and was generally a low-quality script. However, the success of Final Fantasy VII is what led to Squaresoft paying more attention to the localization process. Richard Honeywood joined just in time to see this change. Soon after, FF7 sold 1 million in the US, then later succeeded in the rest of the world. Up until then, we were preaching the benefits of localization to the dev teams, but suddenly they realized it was no longer the pocket money level of the SNES era, and it was a relatively easy way to boost sales and profits. Writing off the success of Final Fantasy VII, Square had the resources and money to invest in multiple, more inventive projects, one of which would be localized solely by Richard Honeywood. Honeywood had initially applied as a programmer for the Final Fantasy team, but was instead directed to the localization team. Once there, his first project was the game Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, only released in Japan in 1997. As for why the project never released in North America, Honeywood states, On my first day, I was given the source code to the original PS Chocobo's Dungeon and told to both program and translate it all as a one-man team. Within a few hours, I realized that the source code was incomplete and was not in any state to be compiled, let alone translated. But the dev team had been dissolved, and no one had backed up the source code that existed on their individual machines. So we gave up on Chocobo's dungeon and learned our first lesson, to make the dev teams back up their source code so we could even begin to work on their titles. This was just one of the difficulties that plagued early Square localization. Communication between the original development team and the localization team was practically non-existent, and the lack of any formal style guides, naming conventions, or even the ability to dig into the game code itself led to the low quality of translation seen in games like Final Fantasy VII. This lack of communication between the two teams was resolved for Xenogears, but was never strengthened until much later. In addition to the lack of communication between development and localization teams, the content of Xenogears was especially difficult to translate. Xenogears was a rejected script proposal created by Tetsuya Takahashi and Kaori Tanaka, better known as Soria Saga. The two had done work on Final Fantasy VI before, but Xenogears was their first project that would be co-written by them alone. Xenogears as a story is a work primarily about anthropology, philosophy, psychology, religion, science, and ideology. The ideas of Friedrich Nietzsche, Sigmund Freud, Jacques Lacan, and Carl Jung are the most obvious influences along with Gnosticism, and happen to be part of common interests Soria Saga shared with Takahashi. Such mature and complex themes would prove especially difficult to localize, especially since this was the first project that Honeywood was localization producer on. In fact, he was the only one working on the localization. The next major title was Xenogears, which I was assigned as localization producer on. We hired some new translators in our US office. However, within a few months, Michael had decided to leave Squaresoft and the two new translators were left lost not knowing what was happening on the translation. Having a lot of religious content, some of which was considered controversial, as well as a lot of scientific jargon and psychological concepts, it was above the level of the then newbie translators and they soon asked to be taken off the title. Religious content especially was a worry for Honeywood, 
With a plot that draws from Gnostic ideas and the ending essentially being a defiance of God, it was sure to cause controversy, and Honeywood did as much as he could to reduce the controversy as much as possible. One reason that many translators walked off the project was that it was too technical, and the other was the religious content. It was a game where, at the end of the game, you basically kill God, and a secret thing. Back then they actually called it Yahweh. Honeywood goes on to recount a meeting he had with the developers that eventually spawned the solution to this naming problem. At a development meeting in Japanese, I was saying, you can't call it Yahweh, you can't do that. I was getting exasperated, and in Japanese, I said Yabeo, and they all laughed and thought it was the greatest pun ever. And so, the last boss was suddenly called Yabe. Working solo on the project also proved to lower the quality of the translation further. The lack of editors and spell checkers was likely what caused a few hiccups in the script, and the addition of said editors and spell checkers was something that Honeywood would advocate for later on. Working conditions were also poor for Honeywood, as he had to struggle to meet deadlines and finish a gargantuan script all by himself. When it went over schedule, I ended up having to not only direct, but translate and program as well. Heck, I even burned the master disc. The team basically left it in my hands as they went on to their next game. I worked around the clock, sleeping in the office for months to bring it to a shippable state. The resulting translation reflects these difficult working conditions. The script contains a myriad of errors, including mistranslated names in areas of awkwardness. Names like Merkaba, Ouroboros, and Corellon were corrupted into Merkaba, Ouroboros, and Krellian, respectively. Numerous times, the script contains areas of vagueness where the original meaning is almost completely lost. To Honeywood's credit, the original Japanese translation of most of these awkward areas were inherently difficult to translate, and many of the corruptions make sense when taking into account the way Japanese words are structured. One of the most famous awkward areas in the script, being a place where the protagonist seemingly repeats the same line three times over, is actually a result of the loss of nuance in the original script, where the second and third lines were intended to convey a different meaning with a more personal synonym. In the end, however, the resulting translation still manages to convey the complex themes and ideas of Xenogears well. Well enough to create a small but dedicated fanbase when it was released in the United States. Xenogears went on to influence many of Takahashi's works, spawning its own Xeno franchise including the Xeno Saga series and the highly acclaimed Xenoblade series. Honeywood himself took his experience with Xenogears and began trying his best to reform the way Square approached localization. This was the catalyst to hire editors to review translators' writing and to make sure translators cross-check each other's work. This led to us to establish best practices such as planning properly for the worst case, allowing for familiarization and gloss recreation periods, and so on, that later became standard. We also began to create our own tools to help with the translation and file conversion, and slowly increased our headcount to match the growing needs of our titles. These reforms would be put into play for multiple future games, such as Final Fantasy VIII and Chrono Cross. Final Fantasy VIII was the first game to benefit from the reformed translation methods, and it began the tradition of high-quality English scripts that Final Fantasy still holds to this day. Honeywood's work on Chrono Cross is especially notable due to the auto-accent generator he created specifically for this game. In the Japanese version, characters were given accents by changing the verb endings, but for the English version, much more drastic changes would need to be made. To solve this problem, Honeywood created a simple script to modify the base script according to a certain accent. For example, a French harlequin would have an accent where the word me is automatically changed to moi, certain instances of the letter s would be changed to a z, and the accent generator would modify the base dialogue at runtime into the characteristic accent that the character uses throughout the entire game. Honeywood left Squaresoft in 2007 to work at Blizzard, where he helped translate World of Warcraft into Japanese. More recently, he has been working for Level 5, known for games such as the Professor Layton series and Nino Kuni, continuing to provide high-quality translations for those games. Honeywood himself has also been a source of inspiration for many translators. His protege at Squaresoft, Alexander O. Smith, 
is known for his translations of Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy XII, both of which are considered some of the best English translations in Squaresoft's history. 8.4, a translation company known for many works such as Nier, Nier Automata, and Fire Emblem Awakening, cites Richard Honeywood as one of their main influences. They even translated a few games in the Xeno series, namely Xeno Saga 3 and Xenoblade Chronicles X, bringing Honeywood's influence back to the series that started a reform in localization. The path to a translation of Xenogears was riddled with obstacles. The language barrier, complex and sometimes controversial themes, rushed translation time, and a lack of support all prevented Xenogears from achieving a high-quality translation. But this first try helped Honeywood identify these obstacles and work to individually break down each and every one of them. By the time he left the company, Honeywood had created a strong localization department, allowing Squaresoft to become a truly global company. His influence reached further than the company he worked at, however, and the translators that he has influenced have in turn brought many important video games to non-Japanese-speaking players. Through his work on one video game, Honeywood was able to catalyze a reform in localization, shattering the language barrier.